Um, yes, my name is Thomas Lina. Uh, I work at DBI in Cambridge in SPOT. SPOT stands for Samples, Phenotypes and Ontologies. And I'm going to talk about the EBI RDF platform today. So, the EBI has a lot of data, and the data is well connected. So, this graph represents a couple of uh, known, well known databases at EBI, for example, Campbell, Ensemble, uh, and others. And we can see we have many, many connections between these data sources. And if we use ontologies, and if the data is annotated with ontologies, we can explore these connections. However, this diagram is more like a, a schema. It's created by hand with estimated values. It's not really computed over all this, across all these resources. So let me talk about ontologies for two slides, because we need ontologies for the RDF efforts to work. What can we do with ontologies? Um, we can drive smart search if we use ontologies with our data. We can use ontologies in data analysis. We can use it for data visualization, like this diagram from the GUS catalog. And ontologies are, of course, important for data integration. And that's where what we talk about if we talk about RDF. One more slide about ontologies. SPOT stands, like I said, also for ontologies. My team uh, provides a couple of services that help you with ontologies and ontology annotations. And I want to mention them um, for people that might not know these tools. So I'm going to talk about SUMA, the ontology lookup service, as well as OXO. Um, the use cases are described here. So the first use case would be I have some data and I would like to annotate this data to ontologies. And the answer would be you could go to SUMA or in a broader sense to the ontology lookup service to do that. Um, what's the difference? Uh, SUMA has its database manual created data. So what SUMA does is basically it stores created uh, annotation from creators from the ABI mainly. Um, so if a creator says, if people talk about this term, they usually mean this ontology term, right? Um, and SUMA and creators do that all the time, obviously that's part of their job. But SUMA gives us a way to store that knowledge, that manual knowledge, and give it back basically to the community so we don't have to do the same thing all the time over and over again. But of course the database of SUMA is small because it's manually created, so in the broader sense you can use the ontology lookup service to look for, for terms. Um, how can I browse, search, explore ontologies, uh, ontology or multiple ontologies? You can do that in the ontology lookup service. The ontology lookup service is a repository for ontologies that we run in my team. Um, and it should help you to answer this question. Um, and the third question is, uh, imagine you have a situation where you have data annotated to ontologies, but the two data sets are annotated to different ontologies. And our reply for this use case is OXO, Ontology Cross-Reference Service, that tries to help you with mapping of ontologies. That's a pretty new service. Uh, it's also still under development, but it's interesting and many people do have this problem, right? That you have ontologies, but they don't quite match. And then the question is, how can we map between these ontologies? So. These tools in combination we call the Spot Ontology Toolkit. <laughs> and please check them out if you don't know these tools. Um, they help you with annotating data to ontologies. Okay, so let's assume you did annotate your data to ontologies and you have an RDF model, then we can talk about RDF platform. Um, the RDF platform from the AVI was a pilot project and started in 2013. So a while ago, we was mentioned already today, the VI RDF platform a couple of times. And it started with six data sources. It had a couple of sparkle endpoints. So for each data source, a sparkle endpoint for your queries. And it also came with, a, uh, with Loadstar, which is a linked data browser. So that allows you just to click on the results and browse and explore the results and, 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 and see the connections between the results, etc. 
And now basically the question is, what are the lessons learned? Because that started 2013. Uh, what are the lessons learned from, from that time of the pilot project? Well, when we started out, we had one database, one triple store per data source. Right? So every data provider of these six had an own triple store and also an own Sparkle endpoint. And that led to a couple of problems. Number one, uh, we had a lot of uh, virtuosa databases, uh, 30 or more. And that just comes from the way it's set up. We have load balancing in production, then you have a staging area, you have a development area. So if I say you have one database, uh, one database per data source, actually it's like four instances of a database per data source. If you have six data sources and a couple of internal virtuosas, then you end up with like 30 uh, instances. And then the Tomcat's on top of that because uh, each one of these has their own Sparkle endpoint. And that is not the best way to do it, um, we guess. So the, this, this led to, to a situation that's so hard to maintain. Right? You have to update all these virtuosos and keep them in check, etc., etc., etc. And the second problem is the way the project was set up is that every data provider was responsible not only to create the RDF data but also to run this infrastructure. So every one of these data sources had to run the database server and had to run the Sparkle endpoint. And the question is this sustainable? I already took it away a little bit. Um, this, the individual team struggled with having that knowledge of running a triple store and running the Sparkle endpoint. It's not their main priority. And every team had to have at least one person that knows how to do these things. Um, second point is, is it sustainable, the virtual infrastructure with, on the VMs? Every time we added a new data set, we would have to add four new instances of the triple store, right? For every new data set. So where does that stop? And the third thing is the federated query. Federated queries are, of course, the, the strong point uh, for Sparkle. And if I ask a question in the RDF platform and I want to use Uniprot data, that's really cool to be able to, uh, to do a federated query. However, in our use case, as soon as you touch different data sources, you had to do a federated query. That made it slower, that made the query itself more complicated, that spreads the locks across different servers. And actually, all these data sources sat in the same data center. So, you know what I mean? If I do a federal query and I go to Switzerland to Uniprot, that's great, right? Uh, that Sparkle can do that and it makes a lot of sense. But if all these databases actually sit in the same, same data center, uh, is it really necessary to do federal query and make it all slower and more complex? Well, maybe not. And because we had these issues, there was this update of the IDF platform. And that's what I worked on the last year. So, um, we made some changes to address all these issues that I just mentioned. Um, number one issue is Spot, so my team maintains the platform. Before that, the RDF platform was more or less a, a loosely <laughs> website that connected the RDF efforts of the different teams, and every team ran their own infrastructure. Now we run the infrastructure, we are responsible for the platform itself. Um, I created one database that contains all the data, all these six data sources. I'm one database now. We use named graphs to structure that and organize the data within the database, but it all sits in one database now. That means that we also have only one Sparkle endpoint now where you can query across these six data sources. If you just are interested in one data source, you can use the named graph to, to speed it up but you don't need unnecessary federated queries for, for these six data sources in our endpoint. Um, we use, uh, well, I created a, a new and standardized simpler process to update data in the ABI platform, um, trying to make it easier for our data providers to update their data. And I'm gonna talk about this in a second. Uh, I changed the layout a little bit so I got a more uh, recent layout and a couple of new JavaScript features. I added a new data source, namely the employee lookup service. 
Um, so all the ontologies from the ontology lookup service are available now in the, in the Sparkle endpoint and in the RDF platform. And I added a logging feature to the Sparkle endpoint. So what do I mean by a simplified update process? I make use of the metadata standard for healthcare and life science uh, data sets. Some might know the standard, a lot of people work on that standard, some people in the room, they worked on that standard. And there is a lot, a lot of resource on the internet about the standard, how it works. It's just a really short summary. It consists of three levels to describe this metadata. Um, you usually have at least three levels. It has a summary level, version level, and a distribution level. The summary level contains something like the title um, that usually doesn't change. You have a version level that describes version specific information, metadata about your data set, and then you have a distribution level. And that's really the data that is specific for that distribution of that version of that data set. So, for example, a, file, a link to that file that contains that data from that version. And I use that standard actively to drive the platform. So, our data providers have to run the RDF data export and have to update this metadata file. And the, my platform can then take these changes, it listens to the changes of the, of the metadata, and the update process is triggered by the changes in the metadata. So that takes away the burden of our service team, teams to, to run the Sparkle endpoint and all that. They export the data and they update the metadata. And then their job is basically done and, and the RDF platform, the new RDF platform, takes over. Okay? So, you should know that standard. Uh, I put some links there. I also linked it from the RDF documentation page and a couple of other tools that help you creating valid void files. Um, logging at the new RDF platform. Uh, I Used, I set up the ELK stack, ELK is Elasticsearch Kibana Logstash, and that's a prominent tool to um, analyze and log just traffic on your homepage. And I do that as well, but I also twisted it a little bit to really log the Spark queries and analyze the Spark queries in a way. So, through general, if, if a Spark query is posted, right, there are a couple of things you can immediately say. For example, is this a select query? Is this a described query? Has it a filter element? Does it uh, ask for a specific name graph? And you can get that information through Jenna immediately. And I, through Logstash, uh, uh, through Loadstar, which is our linked data browser, um, basically lock this information and can then parse this information out. And therefore, I have really uh, not only locked the traffic on the homepage, but really how are the, the queries structured? What, that should help us with the question, what are users asking for, right? Can we find out what users really ask for and then make decisions based on that? And that brings us to future plans. So I hope to be able to add new data sets to the IRDF platform, hopefully soon. I think that is the most important, important thing. If we have more data that is well integrated, we or you guys, or whoever can do better research, hopefully, and make these connections and find new things. So I hope that I'm able to, to add new data sets in the future. And another thing that is really promising in my point of view is, is I, use, I used RDF, I did some, some, did some work, but it's not quite finished, um, to use it for quality control, internal quality control of EI data sets. Um, what do I mean by that? Uh, sometimes there are dead links between the data, right? And the data provider might not even know about it. For example, they point to an ontology term and the ontology changed. And the term is not there anymore. And through RDF, through Sparkle, I can do quality control in a way that I cannot do with other uh, technologies, right? So that's one way to show the power of, of Sparkle and, and RDF as well, in my opinion. Um, to other people, because quality control is something that many people care about, and uh, I'm, I'm sure we can do quality control on a level of RDF that we cannot do with anything else. 
and I'm basically finished, so I'm on time. Um, this is a screenshot of the new IDF platform, um, the new layout. It was released on two months ago, pretty much today. Um, it has three billion triples at the moment, um, seven data sources now with the new ontology lookup service. So just <coughs> visit the page and bring your queries. A lot of people in Japan do. Can I tell you that from the log analysis? <laughs> and um, thank you very much for listening. I have to acknowledge my team, and it's the Spot Ontology Corner. So Simon is the ontology lead. He's the lead on all the tools that I mentioned today. Um, Zero is responsible for EFO. Um, Olga works on Zuma. Uh, the technical lead of our whole uh, group is Tony, and Helen is our group and cluster leader. Thank you.